Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to be presenting the chapter on coordinate systems today from the ggplot2 book. Let me just go ahead and share my screen. So I thought this one was kind of interesting because we've been talking about um, the chapters and how a lot of them say like, this is a really bad chapter, you shouldn't read it or whatever. Um, and this was one of them where it said at the top, you know, this is a dumping ground for ideas and we don't recommend reading it. I actually found this one fairly understandable and interesting. Um, you know, I didn't understand like 100% of everything, but I thought that this chapter was like fairly well explained. So I hope they keep a lot of it. Um, so today we're going to cover what are the coordinate functions, what are the differences between chord functions and ggplot, and how does it handle converting data from one coordinate system to another. Um, so the in the coordinate system in ggplot2 can be managed with these chord functions, so it's chord underscore whatever. Um, when we need to zoom into the plot, flip the axis, set a fixed aspect ratio of a plot, transform the coordinates, change the shape, etc., um, or set the coordinates for a map projection. Um, I had used a couple of these, but honestly, I haven't done very much with um, coordinates. When, like even for mapping, I've mostly just used defaults from the SF package. Um, what is your experience with coordinates, Ashley? Uh, also pretty limited. I've I've used chord Cartesian just to zoom into particular pot mm -hmm. areas because I I'll often have data sets with like really weird outliers um mm. and so usually when just like in the early stages of visualization i'll i'll zoom in in order to tell like you know like w what data should i be using as my yeah actual data set and like you know what's the best way to sort of remove the outliers and stuff like that but i haven't really done yeah. much of anything else yeah me neither. Um, and I've used chord flip a couple times. Like it's pretty common that I'll want to, um, and, and now I'm trying to think like, why do I use chord flip instead of just switching the axes? But for, for something like, um, uh, forest plots or dot plots or, or box plots where I want them to go horizontal instead of vertical. Um, sometimes I'll start out by making it vertical and then I'll just like flip the entire thing mm -hmm. so um but yeah I haven't I haven't seen most of this so it was it was interesting to read um yeah so the the linear, linear coordinate systems are chord cartesian um or sorry the the functions to deal with linear coordinate systems are chord cartesian chord flip and chord fixed um and what I liked about this chapter actually was they did a good job of like demonstrating side by side plots so you could see exactly what was different um, so the chord Cartesian is the default. Um, we, you know, you don't have to add it. And I guess just adding it plain doesn't do anything. Um, so here's an example of uh, the three coordinate, those three coordinate systems um, next to each other, showing how, showing the difference between, um, sorry, a little bit sleepy today. Uh, this is not the three of them together. One important use case for chord Cartesian is when you want to zoom in, like you just said, Ashley. And this is actually something that I did not know, but now I'm going to use this all the time. Um, so <clears throat> when you set limits in scale, like scale X continuous or something, the data is like removed behind the scenes. And so you're seeing a plot with the data points that you requested just zooming in on this little region, but then the um, graph is behaving as if those points just never existed. And you can see that here with the smooth line that's fitted to these data where it looks um, quite different than simply zooming in on a region of this plot. Whereas this one, setting the same limits in chord Cartesian, it doesn't get rid of the rest of the data, it still understands that it should use the rest of the data for fitting that smooth line, but then it just zooms in on the on the region of the plot that you request. And you can tell what's going on here by looking at these points here. These are exactly the same as here. So in both of these cases, we have the x-axis ranging from five to six, um, and the points are in exactly the same place, but it's the line that changes. And if you really squint, I actually found this a little bit hard, this particular um 
smooth and I actually I didn't love that they used iris here but I didn't really have time to fix it but um <clears throat> you can sort of see that if you were to zoom in on this and stretch it out you would end up with this one on the right it took me a minute to realize that this little up wasn't the same as this up um but it, it's not so maybe not the best example um chord flip is when you flip the y and x axis but it's different from switching the X and the Y in the AES specification, because similarly, it's like the order matters. So here's our default plot. <clears throat> um, here's what happens if we fit a low S smooth and then use chord flip. But then by contrast, here's what happens if we first switch the X and the Y in creating the plot and then fit the smooth line to it. So again, here you see that the points are the same, so if you were just going for a scatter plot, it wouldn't really matter which of these two approaches you picked. Um, but if you're trying to do some sort of statistical transformation, it's important because, or sorry, statistical summary, because um, of how the points will be understood. And as you can see, this one obviously isn't a function. That's because the function was fitted when it was rotated the other way. The other like case that I've seen for this that I probably should mock up an example of because I always just do it by trial and error, is when I do do chord flip for something like a box plot, um, I notice that then if I want to add X and Y labels, like sometimes they are the opposite, I think. Like I think if you first do chord flip and then you do like plus X lab or plus Y lab, it will like apply to the I forget which way it is. It, it either applies to like the old axis or the new axis. I think what it is, you know what, let's actually check this um, because I think we have time to explore. All right, so, I, and I could be misremembering, but I do this a fair bit, chord flip. All right, so let's do something like, um, Um, okay, so there's our box plot default. And then if I add and I can I can do like plus x lab test x. Okay, so that works normally. If I then add chord flip here. Okay, so it's the opposite of what I thought. So the X lab when applied after it applies to like what was previously understood as the X. And I think that's probably because it hasn't changed what's the X and what's the Y. It's just changed sort of where it's putting those things is my understanding because one the way that they explained the coordinate systems in the chapter was that it like the coordinate system controls not what's the x and what the what's the y but then how those are translated to a two dimensional position so my interpretation of that is that it's still understanding this to be the x but it's putting it in a different place do you agree with that does that make sense yeah that makes sense cuz i think it's yeah, because it'll be following what what you say is X and Y will be following what's in the aesthetic. And mm -hmm. then chord flip is just tell yeah, telling it to put it in a different spot. Right. Like said. Okay. I think that yeah. Yeah. So this is a, a case that I come upon pretty frequently. Now I suppose I could just I don't know, could I do the could I do like X equals sepal length and y equals species or would that not work i think that won't work with it does oh. interesting so yeah know. i think there's maybe no actual reason that i always do my box plots horizontal and then flip them or vertical and then flip them um except that i'm so used to thinking that way that it's like this kind of breaks my brain yeah yeah, I thought I I definitely thought that wouldn't work. I also thought that I, wouldn't work. 
but I guess it's maybe maybe because it's essentially it's reading species as a categorical variable and yeah sepal length as a continuous and so it's it's like well obviously <laughs> this is what you want <laughs> yeah i mean i think it just understands so this is a this is a valid way of doing things i just often Yeah. don't <laughs> um because the way i i conceptually think of it is i'm gonna make a box plot and then it would look better if it was flipped Yeah. so fly cord flip so all right anyway that's our our cord flip um okay um cord fixed imposes a fixed aspect ratio but it's still keeping co uh, cartesian coordinates so this is um two plots side by side which actually are barely different here um because of the dimensions of the window but you can slightly see that this one's a little bit more squished in the x y direction um and if you squint at it like the length of this four to five should be equal to the length of this two to three that should make a square whereas here this is making sort of a rectangle um and that actually led me to wonder and i did not have time to follow up on it how does ggplot pick default dimensions for things is it just the because i know sometimes it's constrained by the size of the plotting window but I'm not sure that that's the end of the story. Um, it would sort of, like, on the one hand, I would intuitively be like, oh, they, sh they should just always keep a fixed aspect ratio. But there's probably many cases in which that makes no sense at all. So, yeah, I don't know. Do you have any idea about that? No, but maybe it will tell us in the internals of the plot chapter. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Hopefully. That is possible. Um. Yeah, anyway, so I haven't, I've only used cord fixed, honestly, for maps, because I didn't realize that there were the cord map options. Um, I I usually don't use, use ggplot for maps. I use them for sort of like quick and dirty um, maps just to sort of get a sense for things, not for like formal ones. But uh, that is the only time that I've needed to keep a fixed aspect ratio. But I think it's really good to know that this is here in case you need it. Um, okay, so nonlinear coordinate systems, um, this is a little harder, and uh, there's different levels that we could go into, like, understanding what's going on here, but um, starting with chord polar, which is something that I never use, but they gave an example of, of how it could be used. So first, we make this basic um, uh, column chart, and then they're showing that you could map this to a chord polar in two different ways. Um, you could either, uh, you can control basically what, which parameter uh, controls the angle and which parameter controls the um, width. And so in this case, the theta argument, I feel like I'm not using words well today. The theta argument takes either X or Y. Um, and this shows what happens when you map um, theta to the x. So in this case, the angle is, wait a minute. Now I'm second guessing what's going on here. Theta equals x. Yeah, okay. So here, theta is the species, which is x. And because we have three species, these all have an equal angle. but the difference between them is the height, like the bar height, right, the, the width. And then here, they don't all have an equal angle. Here they have an equal width or height or whatever you would call that because, because here the X is mapped to the width implicitly, but the angle is mapped to the Y, which is the height of the bar. And so, This one is 100, and so it spans the entire um, area. Now now I'm like, wait, why, why does 100 mean everything? Because, oh, OK, because they're taking the maximum extent of the y-axis, and they are filling the circle with that. 
So I guess, okay, yeah. you know what? a better way to think about this, I'm sort of figuring this out in real time. A better way to think about this is if you go around the circle, maybe this isn't better. It makes sense for my brain. If you go around the circle, which axis is the one that got wrapped around the circle? So in this case, the X axis got wrapped around the circle with equal spots for the three species. And in this case, the Y axis got wrapped around the circle. And if you picture what it would look like if you wrapped this axis around the outside, you would get this graph because this bar would span the entire thing and this bar would span the small section, which presumably means that if you then set a different Y limit for this, I'm just guessing, like if you add, if you set the Y limit to be like 200, then presumably the blue would only go around half of it, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so that exists. Have you ever used this for anything? Yeah, no, neither. Um, it's real. like our brain doesn't do a good job interpreting angles and amounts. And I've always been instructed that like pie charts are not a super useful representation. The only circular chart that I've well, there's two circular charts I've ever used. One is, uh, is it called a ring chart? Like, what's the one where there's only a ring around the, it's like a pie chart, but with the center missing? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure, but ring chart sounds like it's probably right. <laughs> yeah. And the argument there is that it's really basically just a linear, like your brain is understanding it as a rectangle. That rectangle just happens to be wrapped, and your brain is looking at the relative areas of the sectors. And that that's more interpretable than looking at full pie slices. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So how would you make, I guess the way to make that is if you took, if you had a, um, a, a column chart with like position equals stack or position, e no, position equals fill. We learned that last yeah. week, right? And then chord polar with theta equals y because you're like wrapping the y-axis. I think that's what would happen. And I'm feeling proud of myself that that, hang on, I should not feel proud of myself until I actually try this. Let's give it a shot. Let's try. Um, <clears throat> virus, ggplot. Um, how would I even make Do you remember how to make like a stacked column chart if I just want a single column? Would it would it just be like y equals it's, what was it? Was it sepal length or sepal width that we were using? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, and then do you... Can I just leave out the x? Like do I need like x equals one or something? I don't know. Position equals stack. Oh no, that's not right. <laughs> um, maybe it is x equals species. No. No. Hmm. I don't want to spend too long on this, but I feel like didn't we just do this? Uh, yeah. Hold on. Excuse yeah, let me miss. pull up the slides from. Oh, was it position? No. Hmm. I'm not sure if I can find this quickly, but it feels like it should be easy. Maybe not position stack. Oh wait, position. No, it'll be it'll be like position like fill, right? Yeah. Uh oh, what the hell? What did I just do? Why is this in caps lock? <laughs> <laughs> huh. What if I add oh. 
My goodness. Position adjustments. X equals placeholder, Y equals equal length. So you'd want position underscore fill. Scaling to the top is always one. Wait, sorry, what? Here. I'm just going to copy the section of code into the chat. Thank you. And that's not going to be, like, super helpful. No, that's okay. Um... Plus AES color. Okay, wait, I can just use diamonds. Oh, Phil. I can literally use diamonds. Um, so if we do that. Oh. That probably won't do anything until you add the yeah. geom. Yeah. But then in this case... So you want a uh, geom bar position equals fill. Yeah. Right. But okay. But I only want one of these bars. So what happens if I do. Um, filter. Color equals. D. Oops. Okay, that's that looks right. So then what I did should have worked um, with Iris, but whatever, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, okay, so then we have our stat, our fill chart. And so then I can do plus um, chord polar theta equals y. Oh, but that doesn't cut out the center. No. Huh. All right, so this is not as as simple as I... That's what I was wondering, is if it wouldn't cut out the... Hmm. Start equals zero. Yep. Now that's the offset. Clip, end, expand inner radius ah here we go okay inner radius equals 0 0.5 excuse me oh it's oh, cord radial, radial. Oh. never heard of that one okay that's uh wait a second what <laughs> Yeah, see, it was kind of, I mean, it wasn't doing this, but there's weird offsets. Like you would, I, I noticed this in um, the iris example too. Like some of the angles would be like not, they wouldn't start at zero and then go. Like, I don't, I don't know. This one, I guess it's doing it, but zero is, you probably want. It makes it sound like, it, it says the start offset Default. You probably want clip on, right? No, clip is the about the plot. Uh oh, clip. Yeah, you're start, right. It's start and end, but the start default is zero, and the end default is null. Is set to start at two plus at start plus two pi. So I don't understand why they're not meeting because zero and two pi are like that should be the same. Um, this is very strange. Hmm. Start equals zero, and equals two, or start uh, two, five? What? <laughs> All right, um, we should probably move on, but this is very strange. Um, yeah, major perceptual problems, no kidding. <laughs> Windrows. <clears throat> All right, well, let's come back to that, maybe, if we have time. Um, because I think that's an interesting use case. But for now, oh, and the, I was going to say the other thing that I have used 
cord puller for ever is I was doing, I needed plots of aspect, like slope aspect, um, mm. which is measured in like compass directions. Yeah. And I needed bars. So it was like a wind rose chart like this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but in that case, it was not supposed to be, it wasn't supposed to be interpreted super specifically. It was just sort of to get a general overview of like the distribution of directions um but yeah okay use polar with caution but it's hard um I left this in this was in the slides from the previous person so I take absolutely zero credit for this visualization um this is from the uh, one of the tidy Tuesday data sets the the Du Bois um data I don't I didn't explore this one <clears throat> but um oh okay so so it came from this specific website but this is the assessed value of household and kitchen furniture owned by Georgia Negroes. And I don't remember what year we're talking about. I also don't know what the colors mean or why this red bar is thicker than the others. But I think this is more of, it's more art than data viz in this case, but it is data viz. Um, cool use of cord polar though. Um, okay, so cord trans is useful for transforming scales. And I didn't really understand why this would be useful. Um, they gave a couple of examples, um, like they made a rectangle and a line on the default court Cartesian coordinates. And then they applied like a log 10 transformation just to the Y scale in this case, um, but you could transform any of the scales in any way that you want. Um, and I was sort of like, this is just a toy example. Why do we care? But then I think the example they gave that really that I really liked is this one where this is some diamond data. You can see that fitting a linear model to the data on a linear scale is like a really bad fit. We would not want to actually model this with a line. If we scale both the X and the Y to a log 10 scale and then we fit a linear model, that's a much better fit. This data fits that distribution a lot better. But then if you just show this as your final plot, it's going to be really hard to interpret because like these axes are super weird and they're, you know, people don't know how to read log scales. Um, so it's useful for back transforming where you still fit the model, like the underlying model doesn't change, but then you're transforming the axes back to, <clears throat> um, back to the original, um, sorry, no, to, to the log scale. Um, but yeah, I have always, I've I've needed this in the past with like models um, that, I, that have been fitted on log scales. I think I probably have not had a good enough understanding of what was happening to have like pulled this off by myself um, or to have known to do it. And I think that's that's what a lot of the sort of finger wagging don't use packages people are on about when they're like, oh, you'll just be doing things without understanding what you're doing. And it's like, yeah, well, maybe, yes, maybe that's true. Um, <laughs> but I think this is a really good illustration of why, of the distinction between transforming the underlying data versus transforming how it's represented. Um, this is what transforms the underlying data and then this is what transforms the final visualization back to uh, more normal coordinates. So yeah, I liked that part. Did you have any further thoughts on that? No, I just I I, I also find find or I guess see how this sort of visualization can be really useful. I work a lot with like scaling relationships. Mm. And often you're working with log transform data, and yeah. and then yeah, um, I've seen I've seen plots that like use this, but I haven't worked with them myself. But since mm -hmm. I'm working on some scaling projects, it will probably be useful. Yeah, it definitely seems like it would be, because I mean, in my experience, like I sort of understand, I theoretically understand what's happening with log scales, but in practice, my eye does not know how to look mm -hmm. at this. Yeah. Like, I think it's just humans don't, well, I'm overgeneralizing, but this doesn't, this isn't how we're used to seeing data represented. So it's very confusing. Um, neat. Okay. 
Um, so I, they didn't go over like other transformations that you could do. So I guess something that I don't know is like, what are all the possible, like here they, they use, they use Y equals log 10 in quotes. And presumably there is a way that we could, um, pass like any arbitrary function in, instead of having to use a named existing function, but I don't know how to do that. Maybe we should see it for a second. Let's. Here, let's use the diamonds code. Might as well go to the part that's relevant. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> so for trans, So X equals identity, Y equals identity transformers. Um, okay, so here has a list of transformations and instructions on how to create your own. Yeah, okay, so you could create your own transformer, but then there are, here are the existing ones. Okay, that's good to know. Um, there are several, <laughs> <laughs> you could also make an arbitrary one if you wanted to. I think that is one example of a thing in both ggplot and in the tidyverse in general, where I tend to get stuck, where like there are named arguments you can pass in, but you can also create your own function and pass it in. But then I tend to get confused about how that can work and when mm. to move beyond the um when to move beyond the named options and into like my own definitions and I usually just don't um but it's good to know that it exists um I'm realizing I could just show this in the viewer here instead of flipping back and forth cool Okay, so maps, um, this is really small, it's fine. Okay, maps. So um, I don't find myself doing this super frequently because usually, oh, hi, cat. <laughs> um, because usually I am not actually plotting raw latitude and longitude coordinates. I'm using like an SF object that already has a coordinate system applied. But sometimes this happens where if you want to plot map data that has like an X and a Y or lat, long and a lat, you could just default plot it as if those X and Y are linear um, and it would look like this one on the left. But as we know, the earth is a globe, so that's not going to be correct. Um, it's going to be obviously more correct for small areas, less correct for large areas. And so there is a projection called chord quick chord quick map um, where they will take the latitude and longitude at the center of the plot and like scale the coordinates such that I think they said such that the center is like as close to being square as possible um, which will then penalize the accuracy of the outer edges but does like a decent job of projecting your coordinates especially for small areas. But if you want to get more specific, you can also use chord map to um, to use any of several other projections. So they give an example here. If you give a world map, chord quick map is going to do this. So it's going to be most accurate, like right here in Central Africa, and then the least accurate near, near the poles and near the edges here. Um, but then you could also use this ortho projection, or I have no idea what stereographic is. like. This didn't make any sense to me, um, but I think the point they were trying to convey very haphazardly here was that um, there are many, many options for map projections, li literally infinite options. Um, and so chord map is one way to do that. Um, in practice, what I don't have an example of, but end up doing most of the time is using um, GeomSF 
to plot my SF object, which will inherit whatever class they already are. So if the SF object is a polygon, it will plot polygons. If the SF object is is points, it'll it'll plot points, and it will take whatever coordinate system um, is inherent in the data and will like use that. But then I think this the slides don't have an example of geom or sorry not geom of chord SF. But I think the idea is that if you want to take a coordinate system, it, it's again this this dif distinction between what's happening in the underlying data and what's going to be represented on the page. And so if your underlying coordinate system is, for example, WGS84, but you would like to project it onto your map with slightly different scales, like a different projection. Um, I only sort of know what I'm talking about, um, but you could then use Cord SF, which I think would then also change the labels. Um, I did this at one point where I had, um, yeah, I, I had the plot in lat long, but then I wanted the labels to be in UTM because I needed to use it to visualize something and figure out where to cut things off and I needed the values in UTM. So it was like a whole thing. Um, Honestly, maps are a thing where I kind of just mess around until I get it. Um, but I thought this was useful. And the quick map approximation is something that I probably will um, start using. Did you have any further thoughts on maps? No, I've only done extremely basic stuff with maps. <laughs> something that I find frustrating in our... Is there a maps chapter? Did, we, did I miss the maps chapter? Or are we Are we doing it? We did do a maps chapter. We did okay, so I think I missed yeah. that. Um, did it go over SF? Uh, it did geom SF. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they should add a a portion on, um, cord SF to this chapter, and or refer people back to the maps chapter. Um. But yeah, I mean, the the annoying thing about making quick maps is that there's no default base map. And like, I understand why, because APIs are a thing and because like the, somebody has to provide the world imagery. But it feels like every time I try to make a map for a project, how to do it has changed. And like different organizations that used to be free and open now require an API key or like ggmap, you used to be able to get base maps and now you need not only an API key, but I think you also need to pay, like it's a whole thing. Um, and so I've been using like annotation map lately, but like, I'm not sure how long that's gonna be valid code. So it's a whole, it's a whole thing, <laughs> um, but it is, it's good to know that this is something you can do if you just wanna, if what you care about is not the base map, but the points themselves. Um, so that's all there was in the slides, but I did wanna, also take a minute to go over the part of the chapter where this is not my chapter. Okay, there we go. I meeting controls. Um, so this part, which I did not have time to put into the slides, but I thought was really interesting. And this is a good example of this chapter. I thought actually did a decent job explaining stuff um, because there's all these transformations especially for this one, it's sort of like, what is happening? Like, how how are these, how is this line getting translated into this curve as opposed to any other curve or like this curve as opposed to, you know, what's actually happening? And I appreciated that they actually went through this process called munching, um, where they take every straight line, divide it up into a bunch of small segments, now presumably much smaller than this, and then transform the end locations of each of those segments by whatever transformation we're asking for. Um, so I would have to imagine that for the map projections, I don't really know how it works under the hood, but for something like quick map, I would assume that then like the transformation amount is also dependent on the absolute location because it, it's like not constant throughout the plane. Um, I don't really understand how that actually works but I thought this part was especially interesting that you could see that like all right this point is drawn from here and then this is how this stuff all falls out <laughs> um 
And then they mention, and so yeah, internally it uses more segments, so the result looks smooth. And then they mentioned that for something like um, the quick map or chord map in general, um, yeah, so chord map in general, it's slower than chord quick map because it has to munch this data and transform each piece. So we're picturing like all of these lines here have to get chopped up into tiny little segments and transformed. So no wonder it takes a little while to plot. I thought that was interesting insight. But um, that was sort of it for the chapter. Is there anything else you wanted to discuss or experiment with? No. Um, did we finish? Was there something that we were going to look at if we had time or did we finish that? Oh, Apparently we I have gonna... goldfish memories today. We were going to look at the... Oh, we were we were still confused about the ring chart. Um, let me... Oh, right. The, um, the like, zero to one... Yeah, this weird. Did I get rid of it? Okay. Apparently I got rid of it. Um I can put it back though. Kind of all over the place with my scrolling today. Apologies. Um Okay, so let's use this Oh, okay. So I was on the right track. <laughs> they they used factor one hmm. as as the as the like single x value. Okay, so let me grab this. Do you know? So when would you ever want this a bullseye chart? I was confused about this. I know. That's just, like a super unreadable. Like it seems useful for art, but I don't know why it would be useful for actual data viz. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> let's see. More experiments with chord puller. And then we make a ring charge. All right, so there's our basic stuff. Um, attempt chart. I can't see your uh, oh. R, by the way. Sorry. I <laughs> no worries. Um, okay. Now can you see it? Yes. Cool. Um, okay. So we start with our stacked bar chart. And we said we added chord radial. Mm -hmm. Data equals Y. Start equals 0. End equals 2 pi. Inner radius equals 0 0.5. Oh, wait, now it works? What the heck? What gives? <laughs> um, was it just... Now I want to know if it was because we were using the iris data. So, <laughs> like, was Here, is it cars? That's... Well, let's try it. So, So what I had done is I did... What, what happens if iris? you take away the start and end too? Sorry, I'm all over the place. That's no, that's okay. I mean, I with the previous one that we had, I tried explicitly specifying it and not explicitly specifying it. Didn't yeah. Make it. I'm gonna keep it in explicitly. So I think what I had was iris ggplot x equals. Well, how did I even do this? One. No, we we used your diamonds thing. Let me let me grab this again. Um. Okay, so we had that, and then we took this out. Whoa. Um, filter color equals, oh my gosh, I can't type. Color mm -hmm. equals D. Okay, so we had that. And then we added plus chord radial beta equals y, start, yeah, 3 equals y, inner radius equals 0 0.5. Okay, so then it gave us this. 
why does it do this? Maybe you were right about clip actually. Like it's counterintuitive, but, or maybe it has something to do with the limits. Um, yeah. Radial clip. Should drawing be clipped to the extent of the plot panel? That seems wrong, but. Yeah, that does seem wrong, but I don't know. What, what happens if we do it? Nope. Also, what's going, because this says that on is the default, but then here it says off is the default. So this documentation seems not correct. Oh, yeah. Um, that makes no difference. Um, special. Uh, what about... Oh, it, it, expand is by default true. Let's expand. Oh, no, that's probably the expand on the outer edge. Okay, wait, what did this look like before we made it? So it's this, this is the trouble, right? This yeah. space at the top. So like what happens if we, by the way, do you know this trick where you can add plus null to your no. ggplot and it doesn't change anything about how the plot goes, but then it allows you to do things like this and not have to having to worry about like commenting out the plus sign. Oh, helpful um, yeah so i'm just removing the cord radial thing for a second and what was i doing um okay so what if we do like scale y continuous um what are my oh, i'm forgetting how do i set limits like how do i clip that off <laughs> limits is it y Limits equals I don't think this is gonna work. too many things. Yeah, no, that doesn't work. It removes data and I mean I knew it was gonna remove data, but um okay, well now I'm just curious. So I'm gonna Google it. How to make let's see. Word. What does the base plot for the one that worked look like? Just a sec. Yeah, no worries. Are you seeing this or are you still seeing R? Still seeing R. Oh, sorry. That's fine. Uh, whoops. Now, can you see it? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, introducing chord radial. Chord radial is not particularly suited to building pie charts. So maybe chord radial was actually the wrong. Oh, expand equals false. Ah, expand equals false. Let's try that. That doesn't seem like it should matter, but. Ah, there it is. If true, the default adds a small, wait. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Got it. Does that make sense to you why it works? Uh, yes. It's expanding the limits, not expanding the data. I find that really confusing. Um, yeah. 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 Anyway. Okay, cool. We did it. <laughs> All right. Made a ring Routine. chart, which is definitely easier to interpret. Like, oh, I actually absolutely. do think that this is a pretty decent representation because how else are you supposed to show parts of a whole? If you just show a rectangle, I mean, I guess you can show like bars, but if you if all you have is one if you have like one question, one question on a poll or one category. Yeah. It would look kind of weird to be like, all right, we're arbitrarily putting the endpoints here. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm going to leave this here as an example. Note expand equals false is what it's.
right. I think we covered the chapter. Yeah. Um, that was a neat one. I learned a lot from this. Totally. What do we have next week? Uh, I think next week we have oh, a next break. Week thing. Right. And then I'm doing faceting, I think. Cool. <laughs> faceting is awesome. I'm looking forward to that one too. Because that, that's a great example of one that I use absolutely all the time, but I'm sure there's new stuff that I, I'm going to learn from reading the chapter. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'll see you then. Have yeah. Have a good two weeks. Yeah, see you too. Yeah. Bye. All right, see you. Oh, I guess we need to say stop. Okay. Yes. Stop.